ever caught yourself pondering if the paths of Metallica and Nirvana ever crossed? In the early 90s, these two ruled different realms of rock, heavy metal, and the grunge scene. But did you know Metallica once claimed they laid the groundwork for grunge to rise? That's right, the same Metallica who mocked Alice in Chains and Nirvana on stage. Who has four arms and four legs and works at McDonald's? The remaining members of Nirvana. <laughs> Today, we're not just scratching the surface, we're uncovering the links between these two legendary bands. But before we start, if you're new here, hit subscribe and push the like button to help us beat the algorithm. Metallica and Nirvana might seem like they're from totally different worlds, but there's actually more that connects them than you might think. In this part, we're diving into what the members of Metallica really thought about Nirvana and Kirk Cobain. We've got the inside scoop from James Hetfield, Lars Ulrich, and Kirk Hammett. They didn't hold back when it comes to talking about Kurt. I was really into their first album, and I, I sat down with uh, the singer, and his name was Kurt. Now, let's kick things off with James Allen Hetfield, the powerhouse leading Metallica. He's not just the front man, he's the voice, the rhythm on the guitar, one of the masterminds who founded the band, and a key force behind their iconic songs. James Hetfield isn't just a name in the metal world. He's a legend who's helped shape the sound of Metallica from the ground up. James has expressed deep admiration for Nirvana, particularly for their breakthrough hit smells like Teen Spirit. Back in 2004, in a Rolling Stone interview, he reflected on the state of music during the late 80s and early 90s. He stated that the era was dominated by overproduced hair metal, a style that was becoming stale. But when Nirvana burst onto the scene with their garage sound and unpolished looks, James felt it was exactly what the music world needed at the time. During a Metallica show in Seattle in 2000, the band played the riff of Nirvana's Come As You Are in the middle of their song King Nothing, paying homage to Nirvana and delighting the audience with this tribute. And it was a cool nod to Seattle, the hometown of grunge. It's important to note that James is known for not always being friendly. Once he made fun of Lane Staley from Alice in Chains. And James got owned by the crowd throwing a shoe at him. <laughs> anyway, I didn't know Jason wrote that one. He's cooler than we all thought, everyone. But this here is us. Unfortunately, a similar incident occurred with Nirvana at a June 1994 concert in Swansea. James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich shared several jokes about Kurt and his bandmates. Pretty good jokes lately. Any requests? What color was Kurt Cobain's eyes? Blue. One blue this way, one blue that way. Look at terrible. What has four arms and four legs and works at McDonald's? The remaining members of Nirvana. <laughs> While these remarks were intended as jokes, many can't help but find them disrespectful and hypocritical. What are your thoughts on this? Make sure to let us know in the comments below. James showed his respect for Kurt in a 1996 interview with Rolling Stone magazine. He said he was bummed out about Kurt's death, praised him as a great songwriter, and expressed his admiration for Nirvana's music. Next up, we spotlight Lars Ulrich, the dynamic drummer and co-founder of Metallica, known for his straightforward and unfiltered opinions. I've always had mixed feelings about him, especially in the early days when, um, when Nevermind broke and so on. I couldn't quite hear it. Uh, you know what the whole thing was about. It took me a while to figure out what they were about, but there was all this this negative thing in the press where he was saying about how he couldn't deal with it and how, you know, he couldn't deal with the success and, and all this. And I kind of 
pissed off at that because I, you know, if you can't deal with it, then get out. I think over the last couple of years, I, I kind of understood that this was maybe the one guy out of all these people, the so-called alternative whole thing, that maybe was really, really true about what he was saying. And I kind of, in the last, I'd say, year, really started actually appreciating him and respecting him. And, you know, now it's just, I, I've been listening a lot to Nirvana's music for the last three or four weeks, and I keep hearing new things in it and finding new things that I appreciated. And so it's, it's, it was a pretty heavy thing. On a note, during a 2015 interview on Nikki Sixx's show, Six Sense, Lars discussed the documentary montage of Heck, which explores Kurt Cobain's life. Did you see the Kurt Cobain documentary? Yes, I did. What did you think? I thought it was a great piece of filmmaking. I thought it was very unique. Mm -hmm. Never quite seen a film like that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. As a fan of, of, of right. Cobain, as a fan of Nirvana, it was almost too much. It was almost like too close. Do you know That's what I mean? Because what I now, thought. next time there's no I hear, mystique left. I hear "Come as You Are" or one of those songs. I'll still sit there and think of him in a bathtub, a bathtub of him shaving, right? Or you know that scene at the end where he's holding Francis and some of that stuff, which was uh, challenging to watch. Also, back in 2019, Lars said that "Smells Like Teen Spirit" was the best anthem of the last 25 years when he had Joan Jett on his radio show. She was the one who inducted Nirvana into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame back in 2014. So when they were discussing the ceremony, Lars didn't hesitate to praise the track. Now let's see what Kirk Hammett Metallica's guitarist thought of Nirvana. This guy shared a uniquely personal connection with Kurt. He recalled one memorable encounter that took place during Metallica's Black Album tour. Cobain attended one of Metallica's shows in Seattle. During the concert, he was in an area on the stage, and he enthusiastically communicated with Hammett, asking if Metallica would play Whiplash. Um, Kurt was a, 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 big, uh, a big Metallica fan, and he loved Ride the Lightning, and he loved Whiplash. And I could remember when we played in Seattle in, I, I think it was 1992, uh, Kurt came to the show and uh, he was in the snake pit, you know, our, our, our little area on the stage. And I remember the entire time that, that, uh, that we were playing, he kept on waving his arms at me. And, you know, I went over there to, to see what he had to say, you know, because I could actually, you know, actually hear what he's, he said in between songs. And his one question to me was, are you guys going to play Whiplash tonight? <laughs> and, uh, we did. We, play, we played Whiplash and he was just loving it. Hammett also reflected on the influence of Metallica in shaping the rock landscape during that era. He believed that the acceptance of Metallica's heavy sound by rock radio helped pave the way for the rise in popularity of grunge music, including Nirvana. What do you think? Do you agree with Kirk? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, after we've seen what Metallica thought about Nirvana, let's flip the record and see if Kurt felt the same vibes. You know, Kurt often had his own take on other bands. He didn't shy away from throwing shade at groups like Guns N' Roses and Pearl Jam. But when it came to Metallica, it was a bit of a roller coaster ride for Kurt. Now, now, now that Metallica are wearing Misfits t-shirts, I think it's had a big impact on metal. James Hetfield gave the legions of rockers the okay to like <laughs> punk rock, so it must be okay now. Early in his career, he was not fond of Metallica, but his opinion evolved over time. He went from skepticism to total admiration. There was a shift in his perception of the band, and he grew to appreciate their songwriting and musicianship. As mentioned before, Kirk Hammett confirmed that Kurtz loved Whiplash. This revelation came as a surprise to Hammett, who knew Cobain quite well. They hung out on several occasions, and he knew Kurt was hard to please. This appreciation for Metallica's ride, the Lightning album, is a big deal. It came out when Kurt was just 17 years old, and it's a huge favorite among Metallica fans. Let's rewind to 1992 and recall a bit of rock drama. Nirvana got this huge offer to hit the road for a massive stadium tour with Metallica and Guns N' Roses. Kirk Hammett from Metallica really wanted Nirvana to join in. 
He even had a chat with Kurt Cobain about it. But Kurt wasn't having any of it. He had some major beef with Axl Rose. Other than that, I mean, I don't, I never thought of the Guns N' Roses and the Metallica and U2 offers as any kind of offer, you know. It was just never a reality to me. You see, the tour with Metallica and Guns N' Roses headlining was already a massive event. But if you think about it, if Nirvana had joined in, it would have been even legendary. They were riding high on the wave of Nevermind's success, so their addition could have taken things to a whole new level. In the end, Faith no more got the spot to open the show. Now, this decision sparked quite the drama between Axl Rose and Kurt. If you're curious, you can check out our previous video where we dive deep into it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.